Welcome to another video in our course on probability theory. We now know very many things about V convergence and this video and the next one we will deal with specific examples of V convergence and both of them you already know from your basic probability course. Today we are going to deal with Poisson convergence and next time we are going to study the central limit theorem. So let's dive right into it. So let's get started with the Poisson Convergence. And let me recall what you already know from your basic probability course, which is that the binomial distribution converges to the Poisson distribution in some sense, which I'm going to explain now. So assume you have binomial distributed renewables or binomial distributions um, with parameters n and pn and the product converges as n goes to infinity to some lambda, then the binomial distribution converges to the Poisson distribution. And it does so weakly. So this is the right arrow that I have to use. In order to prove this, um, I can, for example, use characteristic functions. And that means I have to use the characteristic functions of b and p n. And then we know from last time from Levy's continuity theorem that if this converges to the characteristic function of the Poisson distribution, then we are done. <coughs> so, okay, limit of course, we need a limit um, in this calculation. So let's start by saying what the characteristic function of binomial in Poisson is. But we had that already. And that's 1 minus Pn times 1 minus e to the power of it, and that all the whole thing to the power of n. And Poisson, that was e to the minus lambda, 1 minus e to the et, like this. So we have to show convergence of this here as n goes to infinity to this here. And it looks familiar because what I, so you have a power to n, and if this one would be something like something divided by n, it would be the usual convergence of the, exp, uh, of the exponential function. And I can write the pn in a different way. Well, I can write n times pn divided by n and n times p n converges to lambda. Um, uh, sorry, that's p e to the power i t to the power of n. And now as n goes to infinity, um, it converges to e to the minus this thing here. Uh, ah, sorry, there was no p. So like this. And now I have it, that becomes the lambda here. And 1 minus e to the power of it is this here. And I'm already done. And the question of today is, well, the limit should be Poisson. Is there are, there are other ways that things other than the binomial converges to Poisson. And we are going to do this using the so-called generating function which is very similar to the Laplace transform. And the generating function is the expectation of, well, z, that's the parameter of the function, to the power of x, where x has the distribution that we want to compute the generating function of. And in some basic probability courses, that's also um, a topic. And this expectation is this sum here, if I have renumbers with that is in Z plus, which I'm going to assume in this video. So I have to compute Z to the power of K times the probability that Z uh, X equals K. And as an example, let's compute what is this at zero, because that will be important today. So if Z equals zero here, so well, that's almost always zero. Only if K equals zero, then it's one. And for this reason, that's the probability that x equals 0. On the other hand, um, 
what is phi x of 1? Well, that is 1, because z is 1, 1 to the power of k is always 1, and I'm summing all the probabilities. That means that must be 1 here. But I can also <coughs> compute the derivative at 1. Um, so I have to compute the derivative here, k times z to the power of k minus 1, like so. And divided by z equals 1, which means that this here equals 1, z to the power of k minus 1 is 1. And then I have this sum, and that's of course the expectation. So this generating function has three properties, which are important today. At 0, I, could, as I have the probability that x equals 0. At 1, I have 1. And the derivative of at 1 is the expectation. We had that the Laplace transform is useful for determining convergence, for reconvergence. And the same holds for the generating function, because if you use z equals e to the power of minus t, then z to the power of k is e to the power of minus tk. And that means that the Laplace transform at t equals the generating function at e to the minus t. And so you can translate between Laplace transform and generating function. Okay, that's what we need for the computation. And we need uh, yet another concept, which is here asymptotic net to be that something is asymptotically negligible. So negligibility, yeah. A family is called asymptotically negligible. So what is this family? Uh, let me draw something. So here I have n in this direction and j in this direction. And I have what is called a triangular array. So the first line, it ends at some m1 and second line, it ends at m2. In the nth line, it ends at mn. And, and it's triangular, so this they don't have they don't have to be the same for all. Um, mn usually goes to infinity, otherwise these results here just don't make sense. So mn goes to infinity, so it's a triangular array and in row n, it becomes larger and larger, the larger the n. And we need that within such a row, um, we have random variables, x, n, j. So I draw the j here continuously, but it's meant to be discrete. So we have discrete j's here. And they are independent. And, okay, up to now, nothing is really negligible, but negligibility means the following. If you compute the probability that x and j is bigger than epsilon, and you take the supreme or over the whole row here, then as n goes to infinity, it goes to, goes to zero. So that means, okay, ignoring the soup here, um, x and j converges in probability to zero, uh, to zero, um, but that here in a uniform fashion, because you can compute the supremum over all j. And um, mn equals infinity is also allowed um, if I know that the random words are non-negative. We will deal here with Poisson conversions in this video. That means we will deal with Z plus valid random variables. And okay, epsilon is most probably something between zero and one. And if I have Z plus valid random variables, um, being bigger than epsilon is the same as being bigger or equal than one. And for this reason, I can write it differently. Um, well, What's 1 minus this thing? That's the infimum, that the probability is 0, and that has to converge to 1. Yeah. So 1 minus the thing has to converge to 0, so this thing here has to converge to 1. And the probability that's 1 or larger 
um, that has to converge to zero. Uh, wait, what's this here? Yeah, okay. Um, so that doesn't make sense here. So x and j is zero most of the time. So something is off here. So this here has to converge to one, I agree. But this here should converge to zero, doesn't it? Um, yeah, this here should converge to zero. I would say, let's see what happens um, when we do this. But I claim that this here is the same as these two. Uh, I would say that's a supremum. Because this here is basically the same as this here. Because, um, okay, if x and j is zero, it doesn't count anyway here. And if it's one or above, it computes one. So it's basically the same line as this here. So this should converge to zero. Yeah, sorry for this. Um, that's what we have to do. Then in order to prove our theorem, we need one result from calculus. And that's the following. You might know this, I don't know. A product of lambda and j's converges to e to the minus lambda if and only if their sum converges to lambda. And let's prove this. Yeah, and we will need this because we will deal with sums of random variables. So, yeah, we will deal with this result here. So x will be Poisson. The x and j's will be some asymptotically negligible um, family. And their sum, so I'm summing over one of these rows uh, here. I'm summing here. And the sum here converges to x, if and only if something holds. So in the sum here, we will do that using generating functions. And uh, therefore, we have to use products of something because they're independent. And that's why we'll need something about products of these things here. Um, let's prove this. And first of all, let me mention log 1 minus x. If x is small, um, that's minus x plus something which goes to 0 faster than x. And, well, Logarithm is continuous, so this here converges to e to the minus lambda, if and only if the log converges to minus lambda. So, um, yeah, so the left hand side is equivalent to the following. Yeah, well, taking the logarithm. Uh, minus lambda is the logarithm of e to the minus lambda. The logarithm of the product is the sum of logarithms. 1 minus lambda nj, j from 1 to mn, and a limit n goes to infinity. And the lambdas here are small. Otherwise, yeah, this here couldn't, couldn't be the case. Um, let me also assume that these lambda and j's are uniformly small in some sense. Um, this here is then the same as minus, because log 1 minus lambda and j is approximately minus lambda and j sum j from 1 to mn minus lambda nj. And what's the error I'm doing? This is some small o of x, so some small o of lambda nj. 
And that means I have something, an epsilon depending on lambda nj divided by lambda nj, where the epsilon of lambda nj, if lambda nj goes to zero, goes to zero. Like this. Uh, Yes, so I have wait. I have to multiply by lambda and j or something. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, this here is different. Let me correct this. Um, I have to write here. Um, I have to write here. So this year I say it's one minus x. Um, one minus well x times this here is something which converges faster than x square. Um, oops, yeah, I'm writing it like, like this here. Yeah, that's how I want to write this. Um, yeah, and epsilon now goes to zero very fast. One minus epsilon of x divided by x. Um, and uh, not x, sorry. Lambda and j, of course. Small o of lambda and j divided by lambda and j. <coughs> this here converges to zero very fast, so the sum also converges to zero. And what remains is this sum here. Um, so this here is the same as the limit. n goes to infinity sum j from 1 to mn, lambda nj. Okay, so now if the left-hand side holds, this here holds, which is exactly this here, where I forgot the minus here. On the other hand, if the right-hand side holds, I can do the calculation as well. Um, because then this here equals minus lambda, and I can do the calculation in the other direction. And I get that minus lambda is this thing here, and that's equivalent to the left-hand side. So by using this calculation, I can show both things. And now let's come to the Poisson convergence. So I have an asymptotically negligible family of variables, which are z plus valued. I have a Poisson distributed variable, and then the sum converges to the Poisson distributed variable, if and only if two things hold. Um, the sum of the probabilities that one of these randomers within such a row is one converts to lambda. And bigger than one, yeah, it doesn't happen really because the probability that there is something bigger than one converges to zero, even in the sum of all of any row. Um, the proof is not hard and uses characteristic functions. Um, and here I'm only going to do the direction from right to left, which is the interesting part, of course, because this is something here I can check, and I want to conclude that I have convergence to Poisson. Let me write phi nj um, replacing phi x and j. And what do I have to show? I have to show that um, the generating functions converge. So the generating function of this thing here, so if I have a generating, so if x here is a sum, x here is a sum, set to the power of a sum equals product of the z to the sets here, and expectation of a product equals product of the expectations, 
if the renderers here are independent, which they are by assumption. That means um, the generating function of the sum over x and j equals the product of phi and j, like so. Um, of course, sum and product here over the j. And I have to show Um, so the generating function of x here is e to the minus lambda 1 minus z. Uh, do we have that already? Well, we didn't really. So let's compute this. So if x equals a positive distributed parameter lambda, then phi x of z equals sum over all possibilities what the possible distribution is, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the power of k, divided by k factorial, times z to the power of k. And now you see lambda z to the power of k, which means this here is e to the minus lambda, and then e to the lambda times z, I can also write that it's e to the minus lambda, 1 minus z. So that's the generating function of the Poisson distribution. So I have to show that the product over all j, phi and j of z, converges as z goes to infinity to... Um, lambda or minus lambda times 1 minus z. Um, yes? That's what I have to show. And <clears throat> of course I can write phi n j of z as 1 minus 1 minus phi n j of z. Um, and the product of 1 minus something converges to e to the minus something, if and only if the sum here converges to lambda, and the sum here, j from 1 to mn, of course, is now 1 minus phi and j of z. Um, and I have to show that this here converges to, I mean, everything which changes. And sorry, z here converges to infinity, but the n converges to infinity. To lambda times 1 minus z. So that's what I have to show. How do I do this? <clears throat> well, phi n j of z I have here. Um, so, j from 1 to mn, um, 1 minus phi n j of z, so what is this, 1 minus, well, let's use a kind of Taylor approximation of phi n j. Um, at 0, we said that that's the probability that x n j is 0 times z times the probability that x and j is 1. And all the rest here, all the rest here is small because bigger than 1, um, well, the sum here converges to 0. So I have to show that this here converges to lambda times 1 minus z. So let's give this a name here, a n of z equals this here. And we need to show that this here converges to lambda times 1 minus z, but that's essentially easy. Um, 
because okay the z here i can pull out of the sum here and the probability that x and j equals one that converges to lambda so this here converts to z times lambda which is nice because that's already this here and i have to make sure that the first thing here converges to lambda uh, yeah and that's also true because one minus probability of zero equals probability of being one plus something which is small also in the sum so i can write this here as the same as j from one to mn um, one minus z probability that x and j equals one that's a j here plus something very small and apparently this here converges to lambda times one minus z and i'm done with the conversions here so i've shown that this here converges to lambda times one minus z which is the same as conversions of the generating functions and that's the interesting direction from right to left and the other one uh, you can read in the manuscript let's make one example which is not the one that we already know um, I have geometric distributions. You know, the geometric distribution counts the number of times I need for something to be a success. But here I want to have a large success probability. So that will be close to one. And I don't want to count the number of times I need for the success, but I want to count the number of unsuccessful trials. So y and j plus one is geometric distributions geometric distributed uh, so the y and j plus one um, counts the number of trials until the success so y and j itself is um, the number of unsuccessful trials so geometric distribution it can take any values from zero to infinity um and we want to see if the sum here of these y and j's if well i said the p ends are close to one how close to one are they they are close to one in the sense that one minus pi n p n times n converts to lambda so approximately the probability of an unsuccessful event um, in any trial is lambda divided by n And then I have conversions to Poisson of the sum of the yn's. And all I have to check are these two conditions here. So bigger than one converts to zero and equal one converts to, one, to, uh, to lambda. Let's compute this. The probability j from one to n, so mn equals n in this example here, of the probability that y and j equals one well, I can compute this because I know the geometric distribution. So one unsuccessful trial, that's some j, uh, no, sorry. Um, what I have here, it doesn't depend on j because all j's here are equally distributed. So that's n times something. n times something and what's the something the something is that one of them equals one and that's yeah i have to have an unsuccessful event which happens with probability one minus pn and then i have to have a successful event pn and this here as n goes to infinity goes to lambda because the first here goes to lambda and the second one goes to one because here one minus pn has to converge to zero. So that's one bit. And the second bit is the probability j from one to n probability that y n j is bigger than one. Again, that's n times something. <clears throat> and 
being bigger than one, so two or more, that means I need at least two unsuccessful events. And that happens with one minus Pn square. But as n times one minus Pn converts to lambda, and one minus Pn converts to zero, this here converges as n goes to infinity to zero, which means both of the things here hold, and we have shown, as in the theorem here, convergence to the Poisson distribution. Okay, that was it for this video. And the next video, we will be dealing with the central limit theorem. Hope to see you then.